Myself is Kaushik Sengupta. Right now I'm working in Tega Industries. And you can see from there, my position is Vice President Design and Engineering. So I have spent 31 years, to be very specific, 31 years in the industry, right? So, and uh, starting my career as a mechanical engineer, when I went to a mineral processing industry, I also thought, is it the right place for me? What am I to do here? But now, I feel that yes, that was the best decision I took in my career. And me mechanical engineers have got, or they can really give a lot to this sector. And now, after 31 years, I am no longer a mechanical engineer. Yes, by degree, yes, by the score sheet, yes. But by profession, I am a hardcore mineral processing engineer. So, I have worked in both sides of the table, as we tell it. That is, now I am working for the company who sells the wear resistant products, which are required and which are used in the mineral processing sector, the linings. And uh, we do also manufacture a, uh, a little bit of hydrocyclones, where we can claim ourselves as OEM, original equipment manufacturer partnering to hydrocyclones only and so that is one side that means now we are selling but at some point of my career I was working in one of the mines where when I used to buy that means on the other, I sat on the other side of the table as well. So it's, it has been a nice experience for me so far. So industry eventually why are we studying? Our ultimate objective is to eventually go to the industry and serve the nation, serve the industry, right? So, the, how does industry look at the subjects? That is something uh, I would like to share with you. I do not know how far I will be successful, but I would definitely like to share with you how does a industry look at a problem, what they require, what they want from the students or the new joinees, right? So, today, I would like to discuss something which I do not know how many of you have come across the term milling. Have you? How many of you have heard about mills? Okay, fine. <coughs> Those who have not heard, doesn't matter, you will very soon hear it. Today you hear it from me and later on you will hear it from the industry as well. Don't worry about it. So, my subject goes like this, influence of slurry consistency on operations of overflow ball mill. So, let me very quickly brief that uh, what a mill does, because since many of you have not heard, heard about the mills. So, very briefly I would like to you know throw some light on what this equipment is, what it does. So, mill is an equipment which is used in the size reduction process, right? There are other size reduction equipments as well, but mill is also one of the size reduction machines. But it reduces the size, not from a boulder to the powder, but from some already reduced size material to the powder. So, that is that is a difference, but it does size reduction. Now, uh, the conventional thing mills can be of various types. So, today our discussion subject or the thing is this we would like to focus on the ball mill overflow ball mill. So, basically it is a cylindrical section with the two conical ends maybe flat ends as well which are supported on a bearing it rotates. Some grinding media is poured in it which is in the form of the ball because we are talking about the ball mill there can be other mills there can be sag mills, there can be AG mills. In a sag mill, the semi autogenous you do the ball plus the rock itself, they combine together to form the media. In the autogenous, the rock competent rock, they themselves are the media. So, when the mill tumbles, then the media moves in a particular manner, we will cover everything and it by, by that movement, it reduces the size of the mineral, right. So, basically, 
think about it, close your eyes, think about it, it's a shell filled with certain things, it is moving and as it is a, uh, we are talking about a slurry, definitely the medium here is a wet medium, it is, but mill, mill, there are mills which are op being operated in the dry mode as well, mills can operate in both dry and wet, but our focus would be on the wet milling. So, at any point of time, if you have got some problems in understanding anything, just interrupt me and ask questions, that will be better I think. <coughs> now, I have used another term, overflow mill. Now, what is an overflow mill? Or why I am so particular about overflow? I could have said mill, why I am so particular about overflow? So, that means, the discharge mechanisms are there which are non overflow, yes they are there, you can have the great discharge as well, what is a great? It is a, you can just close your eyes, think about as if a circular screen, it is a very simplistic way to tell about a great is a circular screen, ok. So, the slurry can be evacuated because the slurry which is being ground into the shell of the mill has to get out of the mill, then only you receive as a ground product, yes the mill has done some job and you, you are getting the benefit. So, evacuation is a must. So, there are few methods of evacuation, one of the method is the overflow that is a self evacuating, another is through the grate again lifted by the pulp lifters eventually getting out. So, these are the two basic, two basic things, two basic mechanisms of the discharge, one is the overflow discharge, another is the grate discharge as far as the wet mills are concerned. In the dry mill there can be other discharges, I am not going into that, but as far as the wet mills are concerned, it is overflow discharge and great discharge. <coughs> yeah ma'am, please come in. <coughs> so, if I quickly draw, quickly draw a, a schematic, So, this is the side, this is let us say this is the mill, as I said cylindro conical or it can be flattened as well, but I am taking the more predominantly used ones that is the cylindro conical, right. So, you have the con cone ends over there. So, this side is the fit, this side is the discharge. Now, you have got certain media which tumbles along with the mill, right. Now, when the slurry from here goes automatically like this, we call this discharge mechanism at the overflow, this discharge mechanism at the overflow. Remember one thing very important though it is it's a derived one that in any overflow mill, this dimension we called or this area we called as the trunnion. This is the feed end side, so we call feed end trunnion. This is the discharge end side, we call the discharge end trunnion. Now, the diameter of this, diameter of feed trunnion, and if I say this is the diameter of the discharge trunnion, then the mandatory condition for overflow mill is that the feed trunnion has to be smaller than the discharge trunnion, this is a mandatory thing. Otherwise, what will happen when the slurry is going past this point, if this point and this point coincides, then the slurry will also try to go past there. That means, it will lead into spillage, which you do not want. So, this diameter has to be less than this diameter and the difference between there that we call the hydraulic gradient. So, that it can it can follow that gradient and it goes out of the mill automatically. So, this is the overflow, this is the overflow discharge. Now,
suppose you have got a perforated screen like this okay so the slurry goes out from here it comes into this chamber so this chamber also collects the slurry it goes and it evacuates it evacuates how there is a cone, cone like structure so it the slurry falls here glides down and eventually get out from here so this is the great discharge this is known as the great discharge so these two are the basic difference between oh, the total discharge mechanisms available as far as the wet milling is concerned one is the overflow and another is the grate with this background let us now go to the next slide nothing we are telling we are discussing about the slurry now what is slurry can anybody tell what is slurry anybody sorry uh, it's a very yes yes fundamentally yes but it's 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 a crude way of telling it now let, let us see it is a mixture of finely sized mineral solids either graded or non graded in a liquid medium in a manner wherein bulk of the solid stay in suspension and the mixture would exhibit different transport properties when compared with the properties of the liquid medium that is a slurry yes it is a solid liquid but there are some other things that needs to be also discussed along with it now who which are the factors there are some fa certain factors which influence the slurry transport properties the basic factor is the viscosity as i have already said here that viscosity is the basic thing that is the resistance now what are the factors on which it depends solid content in the slurry we we describe it by the term consistency then what is the particle size distribution of the solids in the slurry it can be very fine it can be coarse what is the size specific gravity of the solid and the liquids in the slurry right status of the solid suspension in the slurry how is the suspension partly suspended partly settled fully settled or fully suspended right and the next is the temperature of the slurry so these are the things which directly influence the transport property next again very fundamental very basics what is slurry and how the consistency is defined slurry consistency is often expressed as the percent solids in the slurry on weight by weight or percent solids in the slurry on volume by volume basis you can you can have both weight by weight volume by volume both are being used now if i say k is the percent solids weight by weight then mathematically that can be very easily defined this is the weight of the solid this is weight of the solid plus weight of the liquid so this ratio is the percent solids weight by weight and <coughs> if i define phi as the percent solids volume by volume then it is weight divided by density weight of the solid divided by density of the solid so you are getting the volume of the solid then again volume of the solid plus volume of the liquid so volume of the solid in a total volume of the slurry so this is volume by volume is it clear to you all very important very very basic thing very important thing <coughs> now very often you know people on one hand telling oh i have used this much of this much percent of the uh, solids weight by weight other person is thinking you know, i would like to have the feel of what is the volume by volume because he is he is conversant with that he is conversant with that so very often there is a conflict and there, there is a difference in the understanding also so how they are connected so how they are connected this is the percent solids volume by volume so if you do this mathematical modeling this is the total thing this is the connection 
linkage. Now, you can see though the specific gravity value of the clear water is 1 for unit operation concerning process water specific gravity of the same is considered as 1.03 to 1.05. Can anybody say why the process plant people will not consider the specific gravity of water as 1? Why? Any answer? The simple thing is this the process water cannot have a 0 suspended solid. It has to have some suspended solids. So, if you consider 1 the mathematics is not correct. So, the experience says that this is the range in which it stays. So, if I take the rho L and if I modify it with this then the this, this equation is connected to k in this mode. So, this is the ultimate equation which needs to be remembered or which needs to be used to find the linkage between the percent solids volume by volume and weight by weight. Is this clear? You see <coughs> whatever I do that is a model. Now, some if somebody does not work on the model he does not get a feeling as to what it gets or what it leads to. So, some something has been worked out if you see the percent solids in the slurry volume by volume and percent solids in the slurry weight by weight the, you will get a curve like this. The y 3 curves I have used specific gravity of the solids for 3 values one is the 2.7, 2.7 is the value which is normally used for the base metals. Are you, are, are you aware of what is base metals? Base metals the this terminology is being frequently used in the industry just to cover copper, lead zinc, then your molybdenum right. So, these are the and nowadays to some extent though it is a precious metal, but people are covering gold and silver also with that. Because specific gravity of the gold ore arsenopyrite and all these things they fall in this category 2.7, 2.75 in that tune. So, 2.7 is a very standard value and you will get the silica sand value is 2.65, but 2.7 is the standard value which covers many material in a group in a cluster. So, that is an important parameter. Next parameter is 3.1. This is again something like uh, absolutely pure your uh, zinc ore. Okay. Then uh, at times uh, absolutely pure lead ore they exhibit this range and this range is for iron ore. So, basically uh, it that does not necessarily mean that it covers everything some platform three levels if you can hop into the th each of the three levels more or less you will be able to see the total minerals that are being used and processed in the industry. And the pattern is like this. So, from there people can anybody talking in any language can be connected easily no problem. Now, let us come into the general pulp rheology and rheological characterization of mineral study. <coughs> it is very important because we have been discussing about transport then resistance to transport. So, what is the thing which uh, dictates the transport of the study? It is the rheological characteristics of the study and what we actually mean by the rheological characteristics that how would the study behave if a shear stress versus shear rate curve is constructed against its movement. How would the study behave? So, based on that there is a graph like this. So, I am going to the very basics the, this itself can be a 3 days lecture it is a very big subject I will not go into that depth I will just touch the peripherals which would give you that leverage. So, that the next the subsequent things which are coming you will be able to grasp that easily. 
Now you can see here, this, this, this pattern is a Newtonian, Newtonian slurry, right, where it is a directly proportional. Now there is another thing which is called pseudoplastic, there is another thing which is called the dilatant. Here the shear rate, shear stress are not linear, they are behaving in a different way. And then there are other range of slurries which exhibit this behavior. That means you produce shear stress up to something, they have got no response. After that they will try, they will respond. That means they have got a resistance which is the yield. So that is the known as pseudoplastic slurry with the yield and you have the Bingham plastic. So I, I will not go into the tomato ketchup or jelly all these things, I will only restrict and restrain myself into the slurry. So whenever you say slurry, there are again two schools of thought, one, one school says it is pseudoplastic with yield, another school says it is dilatant with yield, right, we will we'll exhibit that. Now if you see apparent, there is another term coming, apparent viscosity, very often we said CP, centipoise, apparent viscosity, water is this, coca cola is that, right. So apparent viscosity is more often used unless somebody wants to go and try to, tries to calculate the Reynolds number etc. He will be fine with the apparent viscosity which is shear stress by shear rate, the Pascal second, right. This is the apparent viscosity, that is the slope, at any point the slope of this. <coughs> now on the left hand side, I have tried to sh show you exact experimental data which was conducted with a sand slurry tested elsewhere. What type of sand slurry? A sand slurry having D50 300 micron, D50 180 micron and D50 90 micron, three different size classes. By any chance do you understand what is meant by D50? What is D50 you know? Any, any problem in understanding what is D50? I hope it is clear eh, what is D50. Now the test has been done to show the shear stress versus the shear rate, the behavior. You can see here it is doing this. So it is, they are telling it is more or less a dilatant with yield. But people also try to model fit and they are getting this model which is a very renowned model tau equal to tau Hb plus C into gamma to the power P, where tau Hb is the slurry yield stress, C is the model constant, P is the power index which is greater than 1. This radiological test was conducted at 20 percent solids volume by volume because in the rheology we more often use that terminology volume by volume. Now Herschel Buckley model has shown a very good fit in this, you know. So that is the model this school proposes. Very interesting observation also there, you can see higher the size of the particle, higher the size of the particle, the viscosity, apparent viscosity is high. I am coming to that. I know it obviously this question will be asked. That is why I, I, I have shown you this thing. Higher the size of the particle, higher viscosity, but from our normal operation we know this is not correct. So we, which one is correct? Now I am coming to that, sorry. Let us see this thing as well. Typical shear stress and velocity profile, this is this is a simple thing which is being taught in the classes, you know this. This is the Newtonian, right? And this is the non-Newtonian. It is more or less like a Bingham plastic. There can be other profiles as well which goes like this, which can come like this, come like this and come like this. And this 
can come like this right it is just to show you that the difference between the Newtonian behavior and the non Newtonian behavior. Now, here, here you see the same experiment which I have shown you at 20 percent. Now, effect of the solid concentration on the apparent slurry viscosity. Now, with d 50 90 micron, you can see that as the concentration goes up, the viscosity is going up, which is logical, correct. So, we, we have one remaining fallacy that, that needs to be solved, but as the as the viscosity as the concentration increases viscosity is getting increased right can anybody say why it is happening if i put more solids as the concentration increases that means if i am putting more solids why the viscosity is increasing any idea any guess viscosity is the resistance for the time being consider viscosity as the resistance why it is increasing Sorry? More difficult to move solids than liquid. Solid particles offer more resistance. Solid particles are getting settled. They offer more resistance. Why? To they offer more resistance. Yes. What happens? Solid, the moment you pack certain things, the solid to solid distance reduces. So, the inter, interparticle forces increases. That is the physics. That is what is actually happening over here. Now, the same thing. So, D 50 300 micron it is also exhibiting the same property same thing. Now, the another interesting thing that you need to see over here it is dropping it is dropping and then gradually increasing that means, shear thinning at low shear rate and then eventually shear thickening. So, what people said that it is uh, dilatant, it is not purely dilatant. So, it has got some pseudo plastic character, but yes some dilatancy is also there. So, it is doing some shear thinning at low shear rate, then it is the viscosity is shooting up. So, it is getting shear thickened. So, we will be focusing on the low shear area because mill does not operate at a very high speed. So, it is basically therefore, if I conclude that the type of solid a type of the slurry that will be handled in a mill, it may be dilatant at a high shear rate, but in the mill its behavior is pseudo plastic with yield. Am I correct in that? If this is this, this is concluded is there anything wrong clear to everybody right. So, now this profile uh, d 50 90 d 50 300 both of them have shown the same thing same same nature let us see what the other now again the, the similar thing I am coming back that is why I said I will come to that later. D 50 90 micron it is the lowest and 300 micron highest everywhere it is same like that. So, this is the fallacy how this can happen the thing is this when this has been further assessed then it has been found that the minus 15 minus 10 micron particle concentration in that was very very less was very very less right. So, d 50 may be different, but there this uh, d 90 has got less minus 10 whereas, this d 90 180 it has got also less, but the thing is this they exhibited the inertial effect that means, when the particles are bigger and the fines are not present they exhibit the inertia effect. So, it is the inertia because of the inertia effect this thing has happened ok. These two things you can see here these two things have got higher inertial value because particle sizes are bigger right and they do not have the 
finds content. The same thing, the minus 10 content is absolutely very negligible, minus 15 minimum. So, these are the things which you know controls or which dictates the rheology. So, that is why the thing which appeared to us as if it is impossible, it cannot not happen like that, the reason is that. So, we need to go into the depth to see how the fines are placed, how much is the minus, minus 10, how much is the minus 20. So, these are the particles which really contribute to the rheology of the slurry, right. But so these things were less, that is why those properties of interparticle action, they were not that significant. Here the inertial action came into the you know main, main frame and when you look at the inertial action is the size, whichever is the greatest it will be, have the high, highest inertia. So, it, it is like this, is it clear? Now again some other, other slurry is the rheology data of the limestone slurry for lower shear rate because I was telling that we would be interested in the lower shear rate area because that is where our mills will be operating. Now if you look at it D5053, D5026.3 micron right. Now at different volumes, yes volume wise placement is perfect that is more the 40, 46 percent high very high value. And if you look at the nature of the curve, then it is pseudoplastic. If you see the nature of the curve, dilatant, it, it is going like this, pseudoplastic, it is going like this. So, here it is a pseudoplastic with yield, of course, with yield. And there is another interesting thing, if you look at these areas, these areas, that means, say, close to 30, 26, 27, these areas they are very similar as if they are Newtonian, they are not, but they express certain properties, certain characteristics of the Newtonian slurries as well, because it is a straight thing. They are not like this, but they are like this, so it is a modified Newtonian, right, it is a modified Newtonian. Now, here, here you see, now this is a figure everybody will agree with me now, sir this is all right, because 26.3 higher viscosity, 53 lower viscosity, that is that is what it should be, that is what it should be. Now, see minus 10 mi micron particle content was more than 20, that is the reason, because they here inertia effect got negated by the presence of this and the particle to particle, particle interaction over there, right. So, here you see what normally we are supposed to see, the earlier one we are not supposed to see something that we have seen, here we see something we, what we are supposed to see and we are supposed to believe, yes, but the reason lies here, right. Any question, everything is fine? Good. <coughs> Again, another type of slurry, iron ore. See the behavior 45, 75, 45 is higher, fine. And in the iron ore, you all know people who are in the industry, they, they would be knowing that the moment we pick up these slurries, it has got enough of minus 10 or minus 15. The moment those are there, they will behave like this. Now again, this is exhibiting some sort of, some sort of dilatancy. Now you see, the change in the slurry rheology in the grinding process against different percent solids volume by volume, what happens? Typical in a laboratory scale, it has been carried out percent solids volume by volume 15, 30, 45. You can see here in the, in the 45 range and here the particle size equivalent to percent passing 38 micron. 
So, I am having 20 percent of that. So, the nature is pseudoplastic. Here, the moment it is 13, you can see here it is pseudoplastic with the yield. If it is 15, then it is pseudoplastic only, but here it is something as modified Newtonian. Similar now, if this particle becomes finer, you see that it changes, it is shifting now more towards the Bingham. And when ap this is absolutely fine slurry that is 95 percent passing 38 micron, it is fine. See the behavior fully pseudoplastic, right at 15 percent, at 30 percent pseudoplastic with yield, and here. Uh, sorry, at, I, I, I said wrong. This is this is the dilatant. This is the dilatant with yield. This is pseudoplastic fully at 45 percent. Now, normally when we talk about the slurry in the grinding, normally our range is somewhere in between here. So this is the figure we should try to see more compared to the these areas. This is the figure we should try to see. Try to focus on what is happening. So, what is happening? You are changing the you know particle size distribution. So, your the slurry characteristics is getting changed accordingly. So, particle size that means the fines content has got a lot of things in controlling the viscosity of the slurry. Is that point appreciated clear now? Good. Now, let us see. Conclusions on the actual rheological ranking of the slurry in grinding process. Actual type of the slurry in the grinding process is pseudoplastic with yield characteristics, which would exhibit shear thinning at a low shear rate, typical for the operating speed range of the grinding mills. I have told you already. Next, value of the yield stress increases with the amount of fines present in the slurry. Yes, we have seen that. It appears that there is a cutoff size of the particles expressed by D 50 size below which shear stress against high solid concentration for any shear rate is predominantly influenced by the inter particle force of attraction and better bonding of water molecules with the particles having higher surface area. We have seen that. Similarly, above that cutoff size shear stress with high solid concentration against any shear rate is predominantly influenced by the inertia effect of the particles and increased particle to particle friction as per their sizes. So, it is the inertia and friction which is governing. So, you can so we have seen both the cases. Now, cut of particle size for the slurry behavior change is considered as D 50 38 micron for interpretation of the experimental findings. Yield stress of the slurry would be higher for the same solid concentration with bigger size of particles in the slurry. So, these are the total summary of what we have seen up to now. Can the trend of the change of apparent slurry viscosity with solid packing be perceived? That means, how it is changed? I am telling that if I pack more viscosity will change, but to what extent? What is the trend? I may not have the exact figure, but I can always have the trend. Let us see and sorry. Mooney model is the best model as far as the industry people are concerned. There are other very difficult models are there. So, we find Mooney model for the viscosity has been found to yield reasonably correct results for the solid concentration range in the grinding. Because in a grinding we talk about a specific range where we operate or where we intend to operate. So, there Mooney prediction is reasonable. So, what is the Mooney model? Viscosity is e to the power 2.5. Now, you have the percent solid volume by volume. Now, this is important what is phi m? Phi m is the maximum percent solids that the slurry can hold within its flowability. That means, you can go on packing, packing, packing the slurry, right? But the slurry at the end of the day it has to flow. So, at some point it will cease to flow. 
So, just before that what is that? So, by absorb by you know dissolving that or by taking that still slurry can flow. So, that is called the maximum packing fraction phi m and uh, the phi m value normally has been found to be 0 0.6 for 64 percent normally. You, you can have 63.2 starting from 65.7, but the, the average normal figure is 0 0.6 for 64 percent. That is the packing. Do not confuse it with the percent solids weight by weight, that is a packing. <coughs> so, for the common milling slurries involving solids of 3 or more specific gravity classes, maximum solid packing value phi m of the ground slurry of the of the order 0 0.64 has been found to be reasonably correct. It has been found to be correct, may not be to the, to the exact point, but reasonably correct. Now, let us see some live case. So, we are operating the mill at 65 percent solids weight by weight SG 2.7. So, it is a case with fixed SG 2.7. Now, what happens? So, this corresponds to this much of percent solids volume by volume. If I consider this apparent viscosity I get 18.38 very good. If I change it to 68 it becomes 41.82. If I change it to 72 it becomes 204.16. If I change it to 75 it becomes 5653.33. To that tune the viscosity shoots up. To that tune the viscosity of the slurry inside the mill shoots up causing resistance to motion and you will find in the industry people say oh I am operating the mill at 75 percent solid this is fine doing fine. No, this is not doing fine. If it is doing fine then it has the potential to do finer right because of this. <coughs> now, let us see as I said the mill tumbles right. So, if the mill tumbles what happens then? These are the balls. Now, you can see the ball goes up to a point right. Then ball is showered here, but if you if you see the dotted thing dotted thing does not go up to that point it goes a little lower than that. That is a slurry goes little lower than that and then eventually slurry also returns back. You can jolly well think of an analogy as if a sponge is there, yeah you consider this as a sponge, it is absorbing total thing and it is getting squeezed releasing again right. So, the slurry is being pulled and up to this point the ball charge will be up to that point when when these are coming, these are coming, then slurry is also returning back. You can see this motion here. So, this area is known as the slurry pool. In a mill, this area is known as the slurry pool, reservoir of slurry, and any discharge for the overflow discharge or grade discharge, the for the overflow discharge discharge is affected through this. You can see this is the trunnion uh, I have in the discharge overflow discharge I, I, I told you this is the trunnion. So, the, if this is that, so then it jumps and goes past jumps and goes past. So, it is the expansion of the pool which gives the slurry evacuation in process right. Is it clear? Is it clear? Any, any difficulty in understanding please let you interrupt me and you can ask questions. So, this is like this. Now, the important thing for the mechanical engineers interesting thing. Now, the, the point where the grinding media leaves because I said that the grinding media leaves and it comes back. In a, in a trajectory right, which is the if I go back to the earlier one 
you have got the last layer of media right which goes there and they follow the trajectory. So, the last layer of media trajectory. <coughs> so, what happens? The point where the last row of the media leaves the shell is known as the shoulder. Shoulder and where it comes back, it may come back directly or it may have a bounce and then roll, but it comes back to a point which is known as the toe, which is known as the toe and you have the pull here. Now, when somebody <coughs> mechanistically tries to do the milk power, you can see this is the center of gravity of the charge, right. So, this is the and this is the center of the mill. So, this, this is the torque arm, right? This is the torque arm, okay? So, load into torque arm. So, that is the power you require to drive the mill with the charge, plus you have got a no load power. So, when you sum it up, you get the total power. See the other thing when you have got a pull, when you are thinking about this, do not consider that there is a pull, then this model is perfect. But what happens in a pull? The moment the pull forms, there is a CG of the pull as well. So, it creates a counter moment, right. So, it becomes easier for you to drive the mill now. So, that means, mill takes less power when there is a pull. Is it mechanistically correct? The mill takes less power when there is a pull. So, this is very important you have to understand. That means, can I conclude from here that I said that the, that the overflow discharge mills, the basic discharge takes place to the pull. That means, there is a pull formation or in the milling theory we said this is the ultimate pull formation case. That means, you have the trunnion here. So, up to the trunnion level the pull is there, right. So, that means, it takes less power. So, if it takes less power compared to whom? Compared to a mill which has got some other discharge mechanism and that is the great discharge that is the great discharge mechanism. So, the great in the great discharge mechanism ideal great discharge mechanism you will not see this. In an ideal great discharge mechanism if the great open area etcetera are perfectly calculated you will not see a pull because there pulling is prohibited pulling is pulling is the counterproductive over there pulling is prohibited right. So, then that takes more power. So, if the mill power draft at the pinion shaft increases that means, for keeping the same grinding criteria that mill can handle higher capacity. Let us say that in a mill there is a balance like this one is the uh, energy, energy balance it comes from the process energy that is the what is the energy required for the grinding. So, if we say P G S P, this is the specific power for the grinding. It is known as the specific <coughs> power for grinding. Grinding means size reduction, considering all the efficiencies, all other resistance parameters, etc. This is the specific power. And if I say MPD is the mill power draft, it is a mill power draft. So, then capacity is equal to MPD divided by PGSP. Now, in this case between the overflow and the great discharge in this case MPD is getting changed, but PGSP there is no change. PGSP there is no change. So, who should yield higher capacity? It is a great discharge mill, right? Whomsoever will be having the higher mill power draft will yield higher capacity. So, the great discharge mill would yield higher capacity. So, it is very important to note that because that means, can I say 
can I conclude from here that if a overflow mill is converted into a great discharge mill, it can handle higher capacity. If I say that, am I be correct or wrong? Obviously, I would be correct because a great discharge mill will have higher mill power draft. Why? Because it is pull free. <coughs> My specific power for grinding is remaining unchanged. So, if I divided this, I will get the capacity. So, in the capacity, numerator is getting changed, denominator remaining same. Obviously, whomsoever will have the higher numerator will yield higher capacity. You can see here. Suppose for the time being you consider that as if this is the this is the charge, this is the charge and this is the slurry. So, this is the slurry and this much is only the charge. Slurry is more, charge is less. Right? You can see here. Here is the charge, here is the slurry. Slurry is again more, slurry is now charge is getting slightly more, it is like this. Now, here slurry equal to charge. So, this is the ideal grid discharge slurry equal to charge. When I say slurry equal to charge, what does that mean? In a grinding mill, you have the grinding media balls. So, now if you look at it, if I say the balls are like this, what is this? This is called interstice interstitial space between the media or the voids right. So, for the grinding media the fraction of the voids is 40 percent 0 0.4. So, for the grinding media the fraction of the void is 0 0.4 40 percent right. So, that means if the slurry filling is such that whatever are the voids that is equal to the slurry volume, then it is a same same, but if the slurry volume is more, then you have the slurry pool. So, this is the overflow and this is the grate. Overflow discharge ball mill is the case of ultimate pool grinding operation. Proper grate discharge milling is supposed to be pool free grinding operation, I told you. So, this is the, the analogy is like this. Right? Understood everybody or is there any problem in understanding that? Please do let me know that. Now, what is happening? You can see here. As, as the charge is coming up, it is getting this is the shoulder, this is the toe and you have the pull, slurry pull over here. So, you have the poor attrition. Now, let me tell you something in a grinding mechanism what are the three things? The whole mechanism consists of three sub mechanisms right which leads to the size reduction. One is the attrition, one is the abrasion and third is the impact. Attrition, abrasion, impact. So, what is what is impact? Everybody knows that what is impact? This is the impact. Now, what is attrition? Any idea? Attrition is that there will be when the part two balls are rolling and particle is in between, right? This is the attrition. This is the attrition. Uh, next is that your abrasion. Abrasion is this. You can have a chipping fracture over there, but attrition is this impact is this. So, impact is the highest energy breakage phenomena followed by attrition and then abrasion right. Because while causing the material fracture or the size reduction you need some energy. Now, the mill is getting the energy drawn from its power source. Now, energy is getting transferred to the milling or to the process by whom? By the media. From the shell, the power transmission is being carried out 
through the media into the process. What are the process? These three things, sub elements, attrition, impact, ablation. So, if there is any disconnect or any, any inefficiency there, grinding performance will be bad. <coughs> you can see here, so for the pool operation, the impact is poor, very poor impact. Now, the question is knowing the knowing this, then why are we going for the pool operation? But the counter logic is that we prefer pool operation for those cases where we do not need impact. We prefer pool operation for those cases where we do not need impact. Attrition is in the in this area you can see the attrition it is not that that good you know. But if it is a pool free you can see perfect impact good attrition, but here attrition is may not be of this order, but the order which we will get that is good enough for getting the uh, you know size reduced. So, that is the reason you will find that depending on the you know uh, uh, range of the combination I would say that size reduction may be from uh, 10 millimeter to 1 millimeter, 10 millimeter to 74 micron, there can be 100 millimeter uh, to uh, 200 millimeter down to uh, 2 millimeter, different ranges are there. And looking at the feed, we need to assess what is the not only the total energy, what is the what predominant breakage mechanism. According to that, the mill has to be selected, that is the reason all primary mills, if you look at it, they are either sag mill or maybe an AG mill, but primary ball mill for this duty very rarely will come across. Wherever you see some primary ball mill, then it is doing the duty of a primary come secondary because of some other constraints, right. So, in that case, the, the top size of the feed is not to the order of uh, 100 plus as I said, right. Maybe it is in the order of say 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter in that in that tune, okay. So, for those cases, we do not require that much of impact as it would have been required for the larger particle size breakage area where which we come across in case of the sag mills or the AG mills. This is a laboratory experiment glass ended mill you can see here you can physically see the shoulder right this is the shoulder then this is the toe and this is the pull. So, if I take the center of the mill and draw a line at the end of the pull. So, this is the pull angle. So, this is somebody says that the convention is said this is the pull angle the convention is said is this is the pull angle, but people may say that this is the pull angle depends, but this is the there is a pull point there is an angle with respect to a particle. The way you want to describe you can describe. Now, this is a schematic representation of different areas of dynamic charge in grinding mills. So, in for the mill power there are there are various numerical uh, or I would say semi empirical uh, formulas models are available. Many people have worked, but the acceptance in the industry if you ask me that there could be 100 models which is the best accepted one. So, then we say that for the sag mill and uh, AG mill either you can go for the Stephen model model or LG Austin model right. And for the ball mill I would still prefer that bond is yielding good result bond Roland bond Roland model is still yielding very good results and we are not facing any problem in terms of estimation in terms of prediction those are matching perfectly 
provided somebody does it correctly, somebody feeds the input correctly. Now, if you see here, this is the mill radius, this is as if the charge is rotating with a annule, you know. So, you have got the inner radius, you have got the outer radius which is the mill radius. So, this point is the theta t which is the angle of angle of toe, theta s angle of shoulder and you can have here theta t o that is the angle of pull, three angles are there. Grid is the grid discharge, you do not have the pull and for the overflow discharge you have the pull, right. Now, if you if we see the model model, the slurry pull linkages in model model is excellent. Uh, we have some other models available also, but the tune to which the slurry pulling is happening and how much is the power for that is getting wasted, it can easily be concluded and found out from the model model, right. So, I think let us take a little pause over here then we will start from that.